like to dwell on the negative, but after Oklahoma missed out on five-star defensive lineman Williams Winery, the pressure is on to find an elite replacement sooner rather than later. I'm winking there. OU ranks 16th nationally, which is good for 8th in the SEC. Their new conference are headed there soon. We're headed back here in studio with my friend Colin Kennedy of Sooners Illustrated here to talk a little Oklahoma recruiting. You look like you have something that you need to say. Why, why did you not tell me we were doing puns today? I'm sorry. I'm it's, a little bit upset. Hey, so I do puns every day. Director Colin, is my mic on? <laughs> Let me just double check that real quick. We apparently okay, cool. had an issue last time. Yeah, so. context wise, some guy with two thumbs and not a very smart brain turned off his microphone last That's time. Right. That's so right. just making sure But it's on, good. which means that I can start asking you questions. And I have I have many questions. Yeah, on. it's on. And I hear from sources. We have a lot to talk about. We do have a lot to talk about. Right, as as I mentioned, missing out on Winery. Uh, anytime you miss out on a five star, obviously dealt quite a blow to that class. But there are still many other targets that they could go after. Who are some names that we need to keep track of? Well, I know that everyone wants me to talk about a guy named David Stone mm -hmm. and maybe even a guy like Dominic like McKinley. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will. We'll get to that okay. later. But for the time being, here's what I want to say, Emily, first and foremost. I don't want it to come off as like these guys are secondary options mm -hmm. after williams Winery because that's just simply not the case. I mean, in an ideal world, Oklahoma had a goal of adding these guys on top of williams Winery. Now we know, though, he's headed off to Mizzou. But like you mentioned, we don't need to talk about that right now. What we need to talk about leading off is Danny Okoye. In-state target out in Tulsa. This guy's really good. I was talking to two guys who are absolute wizards when it comes to the world of evaluation. Our guys Gabe Brooks and Hudson Standish. And both of them and I were, were talking about where does this guy Okoye fit long term? Like, is he someone who can legitimately jump up to the number one overall spot in the state of Oklahoma? And I think he is legitimately that kind of talent. Official measurement, six foot five. He's getting up to about 246. Freak of nature can literally hurdle his own teammates at practice in real time. And I think that's just something that Oklahoma highly covets at that edge spot. And look, I mean, is he a five star? No. Does he have every single raw natural talent that you look for when evaluating those edge players? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And with him being an in-state guy, Danny Okoye, I'll tell you this. It was seen as almost an impossibility at one point. Like he was never going to end up at Oklahoma. And now here we are. I think OU's actually in a pretty solid spot with this guy, and for good reason. Miguel Chavis is doing a really good job so far. I think they're really starting to turn the tide in this recruitment. But speaking of the tide, Alabama's mm -hmm. in there. Tennessee's in there. Some SEC schools want him to come on campus in the fall. So a long ways to go here, but Danny Okoye is certainly a name to know if you don't already. You know what I'm talking about, Oklahoma <laughs> fans. Now, real quick, another kind of interesting name, Zena Umiazulu. Why is that interesting? Well... His brother plays for Texas. We talked about this last time. Mm -hmm. I was on the show, right? Is it, is it really going to be a case where Oklahoma actually impacts this recruitment? Mm, we'll see. So he didn't show up to his last visit. Actually ended up at Texas A&M out of the blue. And I think a lot of people were like, okay, what does this mean? His brother plays at Texas. A lot of Oklahoma team. All of a sudden, he just surprises people at Texas A&M. How are we supposed to follow this? I don't know that you do, mm -hmm. but I do know that Oklahoma is going to continue to pursue this guy. And so if you were able to maybe add both or one or the other, I do think that's a pretty solid outcome considering what's mm -hmm. happened to this point. I mean, there's no way around it. Losing out on williams Winery, especially for an Oklahoma program that had so many connections to him, pursued him for a very long time and wanted him to lead them into the SEC. I mean, it's a tough loss. But there are other very talented individuals who are still on the board, and I think Oklahoma is actually in a sneaky good spot with a lot of them. We love the diamonds in the rough. We love the names that we absolutely have to know but might not know. Um, but there are Sooners fans in the chat right now watching going, please tell me about David Stone. Please tell me about Dominic McKinley and Nigel Smith. So they're obviously battling the likes of uh, Miami and Michigan State for David Stone. Dominic McKinley has a right. crystal ball in for Texas right now. So where do the Sooners sit with some of those high caliber players? How about we start with Dominic McKinley? I yes. feel like this is the one that maybe a lot of people genuinely don't have their head wrapped around how Oklahoma's actually even in this thing. Like, is this a real thing for OU to be involved with a five-star defensive tackle in the state of Louisiana who's at like six foot six and 290 pounds? That just doesn't happen. But it is real. Now, how real is it? I do think Oklahoma has some ground to make up. I know that Texas has done a very solid job of pursuing Dominic and his family. I think they have a lot of things to provide to him that check a lot of those boxes he has and his mom has, which is important to consider, right? Now, the other side of this is, of course, LSU. 
Louisiana guys tend to stick around the state and play for that proud program in there. And look, LSU's had to fight and claw maybe a little bit more than originally expected, but they're still very much a player. Mm -hmm. The Oklahoma side of this, though, I think OU has two things that kind of stand out. Number one, I think Dominic's relationship with Todd Bates, defensive tackles coach, not only one of the best developers of defensive tackle talent, but just a really solid human being mm -hmm. off the field. I know that Dominic McKinley and his family have a lot of respect and overall love for a guy like Todd Bates. And I think that they would trust him to not just develop him on the field, but off the field. And that's, that's a big deal. And so speaking to that nature and development off the field, I think what really struck a note with the McKinley family and Dominic especially is the soul mission. If you don't know what that is, Brent Venables and this staff have kind of set up a internship, business development, off the field opportunity program for these players. And it's something that consistently puts them in recruitments that, I mean, let's just be honest here, maybe they don't have a lot of business to be in. So I think Dominic McKinley, Oklahoma's an option, but ground to cover, mm -hmm. David Stone. All right, so I'm going to go see him on Friday. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to be talking to my guy, Gabby Arudi, over at Inside the U again a whole bunch. Do I buy Miami as a serious player? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do I think Oklahoma is still in the driver's seat? Yes. Look, it's no secret. This has been the can't-miss guy in this cycle for Oklahoma basically for years now, since he was like a ninth grader. Now, I think Oklahoma and David Stone are still very much a thing, but I do believe him when he says he would like to explore other options. And so the best thing that I can tell you right now is Oklahoma is going to fight tooth and nail up until that August 26th decision date. But I want to go talk to him on Friday when he's out there playing Lipscomb Academy here mm -hmm. and just see like, hey, David, what, what, what else are we thinking about going through this process? So I think OU's still in a good spot there. And then let's go to the guy that I just absolutely love, Nigel Smith, man. I, why do we not talk about this guy? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel asked, like so that, that's the thing ahead. is you did a great job of bringing him up because <laughs> Nigel Smith, man, he needs to be talked about a lot more. So Texas A&M is really recruiting this guy hard. And I do think that the Aggies have a legit shot to be a player in this decision. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, look. I had like a 30, 40 minute conversation with Nigel Smith, one of my first few days back on the beat. And it was one of the best conversations I've ever had. Both on and off the record, he took me through a lot of just really cool thoughts in his head that he applies to how he wants to attack things on and off the field from a recruiting standpoint. And I think for him, one thing that stood out is he really analyzes how these coaches handle his relationships and like what is their strategy in order to connect with him. And look, Oklahoma, when this staff got that job, Nigel Smith was like one of, if not the first calls they made to any defensive line recruits in the country. And I can tell you right now, that, that still stands out to him. And so Nigel Smith, I have my crystal ball in. Texas A&M is really making this thing interesting down the stretch, mm -hmm. but I think the Sooners are in a really good spot with him. A lot of options. It sounds like the Sooners are in for a lot of these guys that they could potentially come bring in on the defensive line. But yep. just straight up, though, I mean, how much pressure – is there added to Brent Venable's plate and, and missing out on Winery to uh, land one of these top yeah. flight guys? We know that the rankings are, are what the rankings are, but ultimately, exactly. perception wise, how important is it that he strikes? On I think you I think you asked the perfect question because I think we both know objectively there's a ton of pressure here, right? Yeah. For Brent Venables to win games and get big recruits or whatever. But the way I look at it, I think it's kind of interesting, Emily. They've got 19 guys committed in the Ooh. class of 2024. Six of those guys are defensive players. Two of them are defensive linemen in the era of the power line, right? Where we've talked so much about this defensive line recruiting. You want to know how many quarterback commits they also have? Two. Now, yeah, I know what you're going to say. Oh, recruiting those guys is different. Well, in this era where it's hard to get one quarterback, you've got just as many QBs as you do defensive linemen when you're trying to get guys like Williams, Winery, Joseph Jonah, Jonia, so on and so on. I think that I look at this, and there's not just pressure, like you mentioned, to win games or mm -hmm. get big-name recruits. But we continuously remind the fan base and those outside of it, this is the class that's going to take them into the SEC. Yep. So when are you going to start stockpiling all these defensive players we thought would be in the class by now? And so I think down the stretch as we get into late August, early September, when these massive names are making decisions, man, there's, there's a ton of pressure, to put it lightly. And I do think Oklahoma will win some. I still think it's fair to maybe expect a couple losses because we're talking about elite defensive linemen and defensive players overall. So mm -hmm. the Sooners are still in good spot across the board. But, man, again, it's six defensive players. you got to start adding them up. Yeah, there's always that added pressure making the move to the SEC, but also the fact that this is Venable's right. uh, side of the ball and uh, his focus ultimately. So you hope that 
they bring in some good talent for him to deal with. I, I got to ask about the offense, though, because you do have that kind of gem on offense and the number one running back mm -hmm. in Taylor Tatum. But who are some other names that they're targeting on that side of the ball? Yeah, things are winding down, right? I mean, 19 guys committed, six defensive. So there's a lot of offensive players in this class, right? Now, I think what's interesting is they've added up a ton of skill guys, Taylor Tatum being one, but Xavier Robinson, all these wide receivers. They've done an outstanding job of recruiting the offensive side of the ball. And as expected, I think you lead it off with Grant Bricks, offensive tackle, really talented player out in Iowa. OU's in a good spot there, but was talking to our guys at Husker 24-7 and GoPowerCat.com. And I think what's interesting about this race is Oklahoma's selling a lot of tangible stuff to him, right? Mm -hmm. A uh, strength and conditioning program he really likes, or playing in the SEC, or player development under Bill Beanbow. And that pays off. But the advantage that Nebraska and Kansas State have is proximity. Kansas State is going to have his girlfriend on campus, like things like that. And so this is making this race very hard to follow, but Oklahoma really wants him in the class. You've got a couple other offensive linemen still on the board to potentially fill out the group, but they do have a lot of talented players along the line of scrimmage. And then I think real quick to end it, Andy Bass is a name that not a lot of people know, but you do have to know if you're an Oklahoma fan. This guy is interestingly enough going to be potentially a preferred walk-on take, but because he's a scholarship caliber player and being pursued by programs like Syracuse, Oklahoma's going to end up giving him a full ride through NIL potentially. And so they really want him in the class as someone who can play running back, wide receiver, wildcat quarterback, whatever he wants to do on the field. He's kind of that new age gadget player. And so Oklahoma would love to add him to this offensive class already. Yeah, still some time to build out the 2024 class. 2025 is looking pretty good, though. Five commits already, a top five class. If you want to read more of Colin Kennedy's work, be sure to check out Sooners Illustrated. I hear there's a conversation with David Stone, as you just told me. So hopefully there'll be oh. something on Sooners Illustrated about that, maybe upcoming this weekend. But uh, that is the place to be if you are an Oklahoma fan and want to get all the great information. Once again, SoonersIllustrated.com. <laughs>